Right now on around San Diego, water customers with the city of San Diego are speaking out after their bills never showed up. More on their concerns and what the city is saying. And many San Diegans continue to recover from the flash floods that devastated some communities. With more rain on the way, we have the latest on the recovery from these latest storms. Plus, what's the state of roads in your neighborhood? A new report says the city is facing a billion dollar backlog in maintenance, and we are working for you to get answers. Thanks so much for joining us as we take you around San Diego. I'm CBS 8's Jenny Day. I'll get you caught up on a week's worth of news and look ahead in just 30 minutes. We do begin with your money. We've learned tens of thousands of City of San Diego water customers still are not getting their bills and they're worried about how much they'll have to pay when they do finally get one. The city told us months ago they were making changes to their billing system, but new emails show the problems keep happening. It's a story we We've been working for you on since last year. CBS 8 Shannon Handy has more on the ongoing problems and what the director of public utilities is saying now. Through a public records request, we learn more than 20,000 bills are currently being withheld. A lot of you have reached out to us about this issue, all asking, where's my bill? So I went straight to the source to find out. I haven't received anything. It's as if we don't exist. When I met Point Loma resident Jerry Green, he hadn't received a water bill since December of 2022. 14 months without a bill. Once the end of February comes. Jerry had no idea his bills weren't getting paid until he received this notice from public utilities explaining his bills were being withheld. Which some may think that that was really stupid on my part, but my wife and I actually thought that the other had hooked up an automatic debit from our checking account. To add to the confusion, online his account balance says zero. Since then, Jerry has emailed and called public utilities several times, but says he hasn't been able to get through. He even drove around stopping at places where you can pay your bill in hopes of finding someone to talk to. That didn't work either, so he reached out to us. You are trying to give them money. Right. And you can't get in touch with them. No one. Since last year, we have interviewed viewer after viewer all facing the same problem. Customers' bills are withheld for months as public utilities investigates a suspected leak or other issue. And when they finally do get one, it's for thousands of dollars. Recently, we've seen an uptick in emails about this. Deandra wrote us and said, I am so concerned about what bill lies ahead. We have no idea how much to estimate and set aside monthly. Bob called the water department dysfunctional. What do you have to say to customers that have lost their trust in public utilities. I'd say thank you for your patience. Um, we know it's difficult, um, but we are really working on focusing on, on this issue. Juan Guerrero is the director of public utilities. I last interviewed him back in August when he said steps were underway to make improvements. This time around, I asked for an update given the numbers we found. As of December 21st of last year, there were 25,128 bills being withheld. Today, it stands around 24,600. That's about 9% of all customers. Why does it take so long to investigate these held bills? The investigation process can be a little complicated. When you have a big significant backlog, you need enough people to be able to handle all those cases. Guerrero says while he would like to see things move more quickly, the fact is the situation is getting better. A 2018 audit listed 10 recommendations to improve customer service and billing issues. Guerrero tells me they have finally completed all of them. Among the improvements made, overhauling their IT system, notifying customers when their bills are withheld, and hiring more employees. Over the summer, an estimated 28,000 bills are being withheld. That number has been trimmed by 4,000. Realistically, how long do you think it will take to address those 20,000 plus bills that are being withheld? We're making steady progress. I hesitate to put a date out because we don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. In the meantime, what should you do if your bill is being withheld? Guerrero suggests checking out the online features they now offer on their website. There might be opportunities where they can take a little bit more action. So if they are able to get a meter reading and send the photo in, that should expedite it. As for Jerry, after I told public utilities about his case, a representative called him the next day to help get it resolved. One down, thousands more to go. Working for you, I'm Shanna Handy for CBS 8.
Yeah, and if you are still waiting for your bill, we've learned that those who have been waiting longest will be getting theirs first. And a little bit of good news. Customers can pay off any big balances over time with no penalty or interest. Well, the five Marines killed in a helicopter crash last week in Pine Valley have been moved across the country for a private ceremony. This is what the police motorcade looked like on Monday, escorting the bodies of the five fallen Marines from Balboa Naval Medical Center along the 163 to MCAS Miramar. All five Marines who were in their 20s were based out of Miramar. Their remains are now at the Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. An investigation into the crash is still underway. We are now homeless. Our furniture, every remodeling that I just did in my back, everything's gone. Everything we own our entire lives, everything was destroyed. Our pets died. Like, how do I explain that? Yeah, we are hearing people's passionate pleas for help after that historic flood ruined hundreds of homes. They recently spoke out at that city council meeting, and right now the city of San Diego is waiving fees for storm related reconstruction for people who lost homes in last month's flooding. That includes building and demolition permits. Going forward, Southeast San Diego residents say they want the council to prioritize them. It's too easy in this city to hoard resources, pile them up in one place while other folks suffer. So that's the question. Are we going to start dismantling that? Also passed a motion to recommend funding in the next budget for stormwater maintenance and upgrading water channels near underserved neighborhoods. And in the wake of that heavy rain and flooding on January 22nd, the city of San Diego is providing grants to hard hit small businesses and nonprofits. The grants are for up to $5,000 and our Ariana Cohen is working for you, showing how those who qualify can apply. Construction workers are actively repairing the space here at K Street Creative Studios after it was impacted by recent storms. I showed one of the owners how to apply for a city grant and how you can too. This is how the recording studio in Grant Hill looked weeks ago. Recent floodwaters damaging expensive music equipment. I, I had to almost swim. Uh, we had water up to my, my waist. Co-owner Rob Harvey showed me how it looks today. I wouldn't be surprised to see it over 250, 300K. Of, of losses. Starting today, the city is offering a business emergency response and resilience grant to help reimburse businesses for expenses incurred during cleanup, restoration, and losses in inventory of revenue caused by the unprecedented storm. To be eligible, a business must meet all requirements, be within a high impact storm affected area in San Diego, have no more than 12 employees, be independently owned and operated, and have an active city business tax certificate. Businesses and nonprofits located on the ground floor will be given priority. I sat down to show Harvey how to apply online, and here is how you do it. Go to the city's website, click to fill out a small business or nonprofit form. Fill out your name and name of your business, list off all incurred expenses related to damage, and upload photos to show proof. I know that these grants are, are set up to help uh, people like us in recovering. Uh, it, this is a fraction of what we need to bring the space back, so I think the, the more we help we can get, the better. The grants are limited, just 100 available. Applications run through February 27th. We've posted some easy links at CBS8.com. Working for you, Ariana Cohen, CBS8. Ariana, thanks as always. And don't forget here at CBS 8, we are working for you. If there is something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. Well, now to rising concerns over possible landslides again after steady rounds of rain over the last few weeks. In January of last year, several rainstorms led to this cliff collapse at Black's Beach. We spoke with local geologist Dr. Pat Abbott about the likelihood of that happening again. He says that area is still unstable. He also says the added water from recent rain is now adding weight to that cliffside that causes clay minerals to swell and lose strength. There are huge blocks of rock just sitting tilted on the hillside and tilt does not last. Gravity does not like that. Those are going to come down too. 
Yeah, Dr. Abbott says cracking on the side of a cliff is one sign that it is unstable. So truly stay safe out there. Well, we are also learning more about a series of earthquakes that happened early Monday morning in El Centro. Some people here in San Diego felt it as well. Just after midnight on Monday, a 4.8 earthquake was followed by a 4.5 aftershock, along with a subsequent series of smaller aftershocks. The earthquake appears to have been caused by the San Jacinto fault system, one of the most active faults in Southern California. Dr. Pat Abbott once again tells us that that was interesting. Um, what excuse me, what was interesting about the earthquake is that the fault lines moved in a vertical motion, which can feel a lot stronger. The typical earthquakes we get, San Andreas Fault, the Rose Canyon Fault type of things, the fault just moves horizontally and sends the earthquake waves out. If we go back to like 1994 Northridge, that fault moved like this, which means you're not only feeling the seismic waves, but you're literally getting an uplift of the ground as well. So that adds more shaking, more energy on the surface than we simply get by seismic waves coming in on their own. Yeah, so much knowledge there. So some damage was reported to buildings in El Centro, but fortunately there have been no reports of any serious injuries. Well, record rainstorms across the county have forced the city of San Diego to release hundreds of millions of gallons of water from Lake Hodges Dam in recent weeks. As CBS 8's David Godfordson reports, the release of water from Lake Hodges will likely continue for at least another decade. I've seen them uh, releasing tons of water at the dam. Mountain bikers see it, water flowing down the San Diego River from Lake Hodges. Hundreds of millions of gallons have been released to the ocean since record-breaking rainstorms hit on January 22nd. It's like just a waste of, of money, taxpayers' money too, because we got to pay for that. The city of San Diego is under a state order to keep the water level low in the lake at about 30% due to safety concerns over Lake Hodges Dam. It's more than 100 years old. I heard they're thinking about a new dam. Yeah, it's gonna take 10 years to complete the new dam. So that wow. means every rainstorm in the next 10 years, they're gonna to have to release water. That's crazy. The city of San Diego told me since January 24th, more than a half billion gallons of water have been released from Lake Hodges due to the state's order requiring the city to keep the water level at 280 feet. I think we should make up our mind. Either we should restore Lake Hodges to the way that it was as a lake, or we should get rid of the dam and let it go back to being a creek or a stream, the way the Native Americans had it. The Santa Fe Irrigation District emailed me a statement saying, quote, some of the released water could have been stored by the Santa Fe Irrigation District and the San Diego Water District for use by their customers later this year if the state restriction wasn't in place due to the poor condition of the dam. Almost every time that we have a rainstorm, the very next day they're always talking about the drought. The drought is coming back. And it's like, okay, well, we just let billions of gallons just go right over the dam. And it's like, if it's really, the drought is really that severe, let's be more proactive in terms of saving water. David Govertson, CBS 8. Yes, such a precious resource, David. Thank you. Now, according to a new city audit, streets in San Diego are facing a billion dollar backlog on deferred maintenance and mechanics say those unfilled potholes are causing damage that can cost drivers thousands of dollars to repair. CBS 8 Steve Price is working for you questioning city leaders about the repair bills that drivers are facing. Car mechanics tell me all the potholes around town are keeping them busy. These aren't just annoying to hit, they also do a lot of damage to your car. We find that we need to do a lot of wheel alignments. Ray Frey walked me through some of the damage he regularly sees from cars that come into a shop after hitting potholes. We find bent rims, we find cracked rims, we find tire separation. Damage that runs from a few hundred dollars into the thousands. I had one car in here a couple weeks ago that the uh, the actual front axle on this Jeep Cherokee broke in half. Um, it was about a six thousand dollar job. Working for you, we asked city leaders today about the added expenses potholes are causing, and they say they're aware of the problem. We get a lot of emails from constituents who say, "Hey, my tire's out of alignment, or my axle got scratched, or." Uh, my rims are bent because of different potholes. K 
Councilman Raul Campillo recommends filing a claim against the city to get reimbursed. A CBS 8 analysis of city records shows San Diego paid out almost $410,000 to drivers in 2023 because of pothole damage to their vehicles. We take care of people when our roads are the cause of their damage. Just like any other issue that the city creates, we cover that. But many times proving a pothole caused your damage can be easier said than done. This is a picture of my daughter's windshield last week. Asphalt from a pothole flew up after the car in front of her hit it. The repair cost us $250. And Ray says it can get even more expensive from there. I've heard of uh, body damage by people swerving to stay away from the pothole and they hit the person in the next lane over. The city says it has repaired over 630 miles of road across San Diego, but an audit released this week shows we are way behind on repairs and there's a $1.2 billion backlog. This despite California having one of the highest gas taxes in the nation. You can go to Arizona and they have the smoothest roads and the cheapest gas. It's crazy. Ironically, we spotted a big pothole in the road right in front of Ray's shop. In Kearney Mesa, Steve Price, CBS 8. Steve, thanks. And soon, us California drivers will have to dig even deeper to afford our car insurance. A new survey by Bankrate finds that the cost of car insurance has shot up by 26% nationwide in the past year. Drivers are now paying on average $212 a month. That's over $2,500 a year. San Diego's rates even higher, the eighth highest in the country, with drivers paying on average more than $2,700 annually. The study cites inflation and factors like weather and population density for the rise in rates. Right now it's companies saying, hey, we, we, we don't want any new business. We're at capacity. So uh, until they can get the rate increase, you know, through the Department of Insurance, they really aren't writing new business right now. So how can you lower your rates? Experts suggest raising your deductible and always make sure your insurance company has your most accurate annual mileage. Also, if you opt to shop around for a better deal, make sure you've actually found one before ending your current policy. Well, 800 days of consecutive beach closures coming up on Around San Diego. How South Bay leaders are trying to get attention on Capitol Hill. Well, sewage contamination issues in the South Bay have been more intense lately due to the recent rain. At the south end of Imperial Beach, the area has seen more than 800 consecutive days of beach closures. CBS State's Brian White explains how local mayors are trying to get the attention of decision makers at our nation's capital. Not seeing people being able to enjoy the water is probably the most troubling and then the health effects as well. These yellow sewage signs might as well be cemented into place here at the IB Pier. They've already become pretty much permanent. You can even tell the difference in the water, you know, the color is all green and then you go out a little further and it breaks. Justin Roebuck was born and raised here and he's disappointed his son Dakota can't experience it the same he did. I've been able to come out here when I was a kid and uh, we had really good time going in the water and now I can't even take my next generation in the water because we just have this crazy pollution going on. A new report by SDSU researchers finds that toxic chemicals and microbes from untreated sewage that were once thought to remain isolated in the water can also linger in soils and be airborne. Once that stuff gets in the wind, especially the breeze that's blowing right now, yeah, I can see it definitely affecting people that are um, immunocompromised. Uh, my, my oldest son has asthma, so yeah, it's a, it's a big concern. According to Imperial Beach Mayor Paloma Aguirre, the storm on January 22nd brought 14.5 billion gallons of toxic sewage across the border. I'm the one that gets the emails, right, from people who are immunocompromised or their kids. This is unsustainable. Our economy is, is very, very impacted uh, because of the beach closures. Congressman Scott Peters says Mexico is currently building new wastewater treatment infrastructure that should come online later this year. As for our side of the border, more funding is needed, hundreds of millions of dollars to make repairs and expand our international treatment plan. I would love to see our beaches saved and, and be able to see people out here enjoying it as much as we do. But, you know, getting in the water is all the fun of going to the beach, right? 
Yeah, it's been tough to see. Well, the San Diego Humane Society is celebrating the reopening of its newly remodeled adoption center. CBS 8 was there Tuesday morning during the ribbon cutting ceremony. The San Diego Humane Society says the new center will improve the comfort and well being of the pets as well as improve the guest experience. Improved the um, quality of our kennels, the way that they're positioned so that we can showcase more animals giving them a better stay here, here while they're with us and then also a better experience for our guests so that they can see the animals better and have a better interaction. Yeah, the new layout includes 58 dog rooms, 55 cat kennels, as well as 53 spaces for small pets. You can check it out for yourself at the San Diego Humane Society Adoption Center right there on Gaines Street. Still ahead on Around San Diego, Valentine's Day can make some people feel lonely, maybe especially seniors. So we'll tell you how Cupid is stepping in. Well, Valentine's Day can be lonely for many seniors, but Cupid delivered some love a little early in San Diego. It's a follow up to a story we first told you about in January. Senior Helpers, a non medical provider, launched a Valentine's Day card drive, and the response has kept Cupid busy. CBS aides Abby Black is working for our community to help bring many smiles this holiday. CBS 8 is working for our community with the senior helpers who launched a Valentine's senior car drive and response has been overwhelming. It looks like Cupid traded in her wings for a love wagon. So we have treats and cards. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Charles Fike has cherished each Valentine's Day with his lovely wife, Joyce. 59 years. The Vietnam veteran says Valentine's Day isn't always chocolates and roses. And just be prepared for a lot of work. But I've, I've learned the secret. Yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> the recipe for a strong marriage can also be written in friendships. A pretty flower for a pretty lady. Your choice. Cupid or Amy Duell with Senior Helpers East County, a non-medical home care provider, contacted CBS 8 in January about a Valentine's card drive. Girl Scout troops, elementary schools. CBS 8 started working for our community. Lots of fresh roses. Flowers, treats, and more than 1,800 handmade cards were donated. It is wonderful to know that we have a community that still believes in um, compassion and kindness. Valentine's Day can be tough for widows. A healthy aging poll found that 33% of seniors experience feelings of isolation. Everybody remembers us at Christmas. They're not so likely to remember at Valentine's Day, but it makes a difference. Randa Dow says a handwritten card. I hope today brings you so much joy and happiness. Inscribes joy. You never know what some smile is going to do for somebody. The smiles help carve out hope for seniors opening the cards. And she said, thank you so much for this. It's probably the only thing I'm going to receive on Valentine's Day. The handwritten message inside carries a lot of love. Love is what keeps us going and love is what makes the world a better place. You see how love creates those smiles. It's OK. It's OK. And it's Joyce's smile that Charles wants to hold on to a little longer. She's at stage seven now on the Alzheimer's spectrum. Not sure how long we have, but I want to make it as good as possible. Working for our community in Santee, Abby Black, CBS 8. Uh, relationship goals, right? So sweet. Abby, thank you. Well, that'll do it for us. Thank you for your time. Thank you for staying informed. For CBS 8, I'm Jenny Day. Take good care.